done that I can actually feel the whole arcade which is all the molars together and without having the distraction of those sharp points I can tell which tooth or teeth are out of are out of alignment. There's just one little tiny tooth that's sort of sitting up above the others. So that's gonna File on a certain angle and file a grinding surface because I know I'm only going to file the tooth that's sitting up. We don't want to prematurely age any horse. Anything that's sitting up a bit too high is going to affect the opposing tooth. This is an odd looking file that I used to do the uh, buckle aspect which is the outside edge of the upper molars on the front very front molar that's going to if it doesn't come in contact with the bit you may have a drop nose band or um, another piece of tack that might push on this cheek here um, but mainly I dress, dress up these front molars to accommodate the bit Put in what we call a bit seat, um, which is just a, a minor rolling of the tooth from the buckle aspect, which is the outside cheek aspect, to the rostral aspect, which is the front, and then slightly around to the lingual aspect, which is in towards the tongue. you do. He's, is that a bit of a, a bit chewer, is he? Yeah. Okay. So he actually wears his teeth quite a lot up the front. So there's not a lot of shaking to do. When the horse is chewing, it needs to produce a lot of saliva. The reason is it's, it helps maintain the, the health of the horse's mouth. It's a very important aspect to the function of the mouth. Okay. And it's probably underestimated how important it is. Boy. I forget how many litres they produce, but it's something like 20 litres. Mm. Okay, this is the final polish. The blades are quite sharp and they can leave the grooves. This is a bit like sandpaper. <laughs> Go over the majority of the area. Just smooth those edges. Good boy. And again, probably one of the most important areas is the, around the back of the, mold, the back molds.
the rinse and spit portion. Boy. It's important to flush their mouth because there can be quite a lot of dental fragment left behind that can float around and possibly get caught in gums and whatnot. Good boy. And finally, I'll go back in and Inspect everything again. If I suspect a problem, even a minor problem, I'd, I'd definitely get a torch and, and, and uh, look at that more thoroughly. Um, but I'm also inspecting the, the health of the gum. I can actually feel if the gum's nice and smooth and and uh, there's no pocketing or, or periodontal disease or whatnot. The dead giveaway when you finish doing this is having a smell. And if there's a pungent odour, then that needs um, further investigation. But you should inspect thoroughly every time. Did he have any lacerations on the cheeks? No, no, well, he's maintained regularly, so he doesn't get to a point where the, the sharp edges actually cut his cheeks. Um, so he doesn't get that problem, but, you know, a horse that's, especially if he's fed processed food, um, they're more likely to las get lacerations in their cheeks. Right. And it's usually further back, it's usually around the back a couple of molars that they get the lacerations. Between breeds, John, do you see huge differences in mouth structure? I know you said that every horse is, is unique in its mouth, but do you see um, you know, things that uh, are quite specific to a breed? Um, there's, there are huge differences. But generally, I mean, even with the, the breeds that have fewer problems, because they're man-made, they're bred by, you know, mm. a breeding program, and they're not considering genetic information that determines what their teeth are going to be like, um, their, their teeth, you know, uh, can be, can, there can be a great variation between you know, with even even within a breed, but generally, the bigger the head, the more room for the molars to grow and erupt, and uh, usually, the better function uh, that that head has overall. Um, well, as you can see, he doesn't have any trouble eating. <laughs> no. Right. Take a few out. <laughs> but see, that would in. in impede the whole function. The whole idea of their teeth is to process it to a fine paste so that it can be you know, swallowed um, along with the saliva. So it's nice, right. moist, fine ground down material in a bolus and then once it gets into the stomach it, it can you know, start the digestive process. But if it's coarse, dry um, it, and uh, you know, it'll be hard to swallow, it'll uh, impede digestion, probably lead to, and that's why it leads to cases of colic um, and other problems, ill, you know, poor condition. They just can't get the nutrition mm. or the nutrients out of a big piece of grass mm. as opposed to a tiny, finely ground up piece of grass. It's really important. I mind you, fella. You'll be right. You'll be right. To keep this tartar off the canines, and sometimes they're in sizes. You can do this. Sometimes it can come off with simply a fingernail, but other times it needs something a little bit more persuasive. Maybe a nail file or whatever. Mm -hmm. The reason why you get rid of that tartar is to prevent 
uh, periodontal disease getting in underneath that, that uh, the, the tartar. It's actually the remains of, of bacteria. So it's an indication that they're, you know, that they're starting to win the war against the good bacteria which keep their mouth nice and clean and, and uh, healthy. So the more you can remove a really uh, beneficial position for those detrimental bacteria to, to, to survive, the, which is, means flushing out all those particles between their molars or flushing their mouth out, picking their incisors, you know, bits and pieces that get stuck in between their incisors, which are the front teeth, and just chipping away at that tartar. More often it's on the bottom, but bottom canine. But uh, now and again they can have it on on their upper canine as well, and their incisors. And the, in the serious cases they have tartar build up on their molars as well. Which is, is a strong indication that it's um, a problem with the function. Okay, we've finished the, uh, the float and now the important part is, well according to John it's us paying the invoice, <laughs> uh, but for us it's to get some sort of description of what was wrong with the teeth, what John did and then also if he recommends any other action to be taken or the timing for the next appointment. And I keep that as a record for every horse um, so that I know where their teeth are at. Thank <laughs> you.